eagle coming. Whoa. Oh. This is Raptorama. It's the first ever raptor festival that's a combined effort of the National Park Service at Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge, New York City Audubon, and the American Literal Society's Jamaica Bay guardian, Don Reapy. Raptors or birds of prey are or species of birds that grasp and kill their prey with these talons. Some of them eat fish like the osprey, others uh, the smaller birds kind of concentrate on mice and even insects like uh, crickets and grasshoppers. The bigger ones concentrate on mammals like squirrels and rabbits, things like that. Yeah, raptors uh, really uh, capture people's imagination. They have these large eyes, many of binocular vision, somewhat like the, our eyes. So I think people kind of identify with those birds that way. Kids love dinosaurs, right? Birds are related to dinosaurs. They're somewhat uh, prehistoric in look, some of them. Just at the size and, and majesty. Well, look, the bald eagle, the symbol of America. Why did we choose that over the, the turkey? <laughs> yeah, what kind of owl is this? It's a screech him? owl. It's uh, an eastern screech owl. Unfortunately, he was hit by a car, and he's non-releasable at this point. Uh, he was, uh, had a fractured wing and an injury to his leg. And for that reason, he's not able to fly, to be able to hunt, to be able to take care of himself in the wild. So we'll keep him the rest of his life and use him for educational programs like this. What do these little owls eat? These guys are rodent eaters primarily. Small mice, voles, moles, small birds even, crickets, grasshoppers, frogs. Anything small that moves is potential prey item for them. I think we're getting a lot of families here because there is interest in being outdoors with your kids. This is a national park in New York City that's accessible by the A train, by subway, and we want people to come here. Falcons are bird eaters, so they use their speed at 200 miles an hour. If that duck is flying 60 miles an hour away from it, it's like getting hit with a brick, and it basically knocks it out. Uh, the owl in the back, Augie, eats two rats a night. So the larger the animal, the more their, more their requirement for nutrition, uh, in, it also works in lifespan as well. This guy may live 10, 12 years. This one might live 15 years. Augie in the back can live 30 to 35 years. The larger the animal, the, long, the longer their lifespan is. So what is this bird? This is an American kestrel. His name is Griffin. He's nine years old. Wow. He was um, living in Manhattan, and his first jump out of his little nesting area, he crashed to the ground and fractured his skull and broke his collarbone, which is called the coracoid. And that bone is like a piece of thread. It's very, very thin. Now, is this male or female? It's a male. How do you tell? Because of the coloring. He's brightly colored. The girls are all brown and they have boring. Are the females larger than the males? Yes. All birds of prey, the girls are bigger. Why is that, do you think? Because they protect their nests, they do most of the hunting, and they protect their little children. It's not work. I'm a volunteer. I don't get paid to do this. I take in over 900 animals a year, and I do it from my house. Um, I started rescuing animals when I was five, and it's just, we all have a purpose, and this is my purpose. It's my passion. I love doing this. Uh, oh, what's that sound? Not a very pretty sound. These are native to New York City, and we've found them in old buildings, abandoned buildings in places like Manhattan, Ellis Island. Hey, calm down. <laughs> but uh, they're very efficient uh, predators of rats and mice. We've, we've done studies of the pellets of these birds, and we found that they eat mostly meadow voles, house mice, white-footed mice, and some Norway rats as well. But uh, beautiful birds. Look at the size of the talons on that bird. He's thinking when he sees a hand, he goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very vocal. I don't blame him. Beautiful. The facial disc. It's like a parabolic. Uh, sound disc and when to locate their prey which they're doing in very low level light and one of the ears is lower than the top they can kind of triangulate on prey they'll hear a little rustling 
very silently fly over. They know exactly where it is. Yeah. What kind of bird are you? Again? Oh. This is a red-tailed hawk. One of the commonest hawks in New York City, nesting in every burrow. And uh, you can tell it's a red tail from distance by that dark belly band, the, the dark color across the belly. So, and also, hello, the red tail. Sizable predator, big talons. They can take fairly large prey like rabbits and, and uh, you know, small uh, possum and things like that. What happened to this bird? A homeowner on Long Island shot her intentionally. Uh, she lives in their backyard. Their backyard bordered a golf course. She lived on a golf course. She used to perch in a pine tree in the on, the on the border of his yard and golf course. He purchased a gun. He thought he was protecting his children who played in the backyard, and he intentionally shot her. His wife called me up a little while later to report there was an injured red tail in their yard. I brought it to my vet's office. After we x-rayed it, we learned instantly that she'd been shot. She wasn't shot a mile away and landed in their yard. Her wing was pretty much... Yeah, the owl. Bald eagles and a lot of these top of the line predators are here due to the banning of DDT in, in the mid-70s. Okay. So when DDT was banned, uh, over time, birds are able to lay more viable eggs. The symbol of America, which is basically a scavenger, right? <laughs> they'll come to road kills and things like that, but the, and they'll also harass ospreys to get the osprey to drop their fish and they get them, you know? Yes, male and female both hunt, yep. The female stays at the nest primarily when she, as soon as eggs are laid. She'll get off for short breaks, but she does 23 hours a day of brooding, sitting on, a, sitting on eggs. The male provides the food, he's the hunter. Dad brings food back, hands it off to mom, and she tears it apart and beak to beak feeds the baby so they're able to self-feed. Uh, they're full grown in about three months. Wow. And this is all Mother Nature's plan. So if they're born in July, August, by the time September, October comes around, they have to be independent, they have to be able to take care of themselves, and they have to be fully flighted to Cooper's be able to- Hawk overhead. <laughs> Kestrel. Yeah, so we'll get, here's another one coming. Another Kestrel coming. We're at Fort Tilden right on the beach, off Rockaway Beach here. So just 100 yards off to my right here is the Atlantic Ocean. The bay side is not far, maybe less than a quarter mile that way. This narrow strip peninsula is called Barrier Island, basically a big sand spit. That's what they follow because this kind of wind pushes them to the coast. So let's see, what do we have here? You have to be patient. <laughs> oh, right up overhead. Yeah, oh yeah. Small birds look like kestrels. Let's see. There's another bird way out there heading. That could be a peregrine. Whoa, he's really moving. Oh, the oh. Um, yeah, there's a hawk right there. That's a Cooper's hawk. Maybe we can get out of the wind a little bit over here. A little better. Yeah. Oh, we just were buzzed by a, whoa, that was a Merlin. See that guy, whoa, look, he's going like 60 miles an hour. These birds are really moving. You gotta be quick to see them. Oh, there's, there's a hawk right there. Right over the water, sharp shin. Right behind us, a, a Merlin, just zipping by. Oh, look, oh, look at how he's diving on a small bird there. Look at him. Wow. All right, let's keep our eyes out here. Oh, big bird. That's a hawk, red-tailed hawk. A pigeon. Hey, pigeons are very good flyers. Pigeons can fly at 60 miles an hour. Wow. Hi, I'm Don Rippey, the Jamaica Bay Guardian and Director of the Northeast Chapter of the American Literal Society. And I'm Alex Sablocki, the Executive Director of the Jamaica Bay Rockaway Parks Conservancy. For the past 20 years, groups like ours have been protecting and restoring habitats in and around Jamaica Bay. But a lot more needs to be done and we could use your help. Consider volunteering to help us improve the bay. As nonprofit organizations, we are grateful for any monetary contributions you can make help us in these efforts. Finally, we invite you to share this video with your friends. 
and we invite everyone to come down to the bay and explore the world of wonders that we have right here in our own backyard. Together we can protect and restore Jamaica Bay. Bay.